You're listening to the Well Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Gemma Lee, women's menstrual cycle educator, natural fertility coach, and daytime mermaid. This is a place where we discuss all things periods, poo, ovulation, fertility, and sex. Join me weekly as we rediscover our menstrual cycles, unlock its superpowers, and guide you back into your cyclical nature. You're listening to episode 178 of the Well Woman podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is another episode of our Reclaiming Your Cycle series. And today we're talking about 10 menstrual cycle rituals you need to try. Now, what do you currently do for your menstrual cycle? This isn't just rituals while you're bleeding, but rituals in any of the four phases of your cycle. Um, head over to Instagram at wellsome underscore Gemma Lee and share with me what are your cycle rituals? I'd love to hear from you about the things that you tried. Now, today, these 10 rituals I'm going to be sharing with you might be things that you've never thought of before. Maybe they're things that you haven't yet used or heard of or done. And so that's why we're talking about 10 rituals you need to introduce to your menstrual cycle to help a healthy flow throughout each of the four phases and of course, an aligned cycle. So the first one is one of my favorites, and this is capturing your menstrual blood and giving it back to your garden or your plants in your home or back to the earth. This is something I absolutely love to do. Now to do this, you do need to use a menstrual cup or you can use menstrual underwear and or reusable pads. The way you could do that with reusable pads or underwear is once you've finished wearing the underwear or the pads, you can rinse them through water and squeeze them into a jug or a bowl, and then you can give them and water them back to the earth. You'll notice that the blood will run out of the undies, similar to what you do when you need to rinse them out anyway. Um, or you can use a menstrual cup. So I, I often do both of these, um, but giving your menstrual blood back to the earth is so beautiful because the menstrual blood is so full of great nurturing, nourishing properties. So one of the things that is really fantastic with plants is if your plant is dying or it's not looking like it's doing the best, it needs a little bit of love. Like often it's my parsley plant in my herb garden and I will just pour my menstrual blood, mix it with some water and pour it into the garden so that it feels like it's getting fully nurtured and nourished. So that's number one is give your blood back to your garden could be anywhere, your earth, your garden, your plants, your indoor plants, but giving it back to the garden. Now, number two is exploring your menstrual blood for yourself. And I call this blood honoring. So when you capture your menstrual blood, instead of giving it to your garden, maybe explore using this on your body. So massaging it over your belly or your breasts when you're in the shower, giving yourself a facial mask is also fantastic. I did mention before that it, your menstrual blood has such beautiful, rich properties of nutrients in it. And it's a fantastic thing that you can do is you can give yourself a little face mask with your menstrual blood. Now, if that feels like it's way too out of the ordinary and a bit whack for you, you can just use this by starting to explore by pouring it over your body and massaging your body with your menstrual blood. Your menstrual blood is absolutely divine. It's not anything to be ashamed of. It's not anything to be afraid of. It is beautiful, honoring gift of life. And they do call this a life force, your menstrual discharge or your uterine lining. Your body has produced this beautiful life force and it's disregarding it. And we can use this in other ways. So there's my top two ways you can gather and explore a ritual with your menstrual bleed. Now, number three, I love this. Now, as springtime arrives, buy yourself something nice. Now, for some people and a lot of vulva owners love to get flowers. And so flowers at your springtime is a beautiful ritual because it represents you blossoming. You're blossoming out of your cave, your inner autumn, sorry, your inner winter menstrual cave, and you are coming out into the world. So buying yourself flowers, you can pre-buy them and set, have them sent to you in the future. I think this is a fantastic idea at the beginning of your bleed, buying the flowers so that they arrive on day five or day six or day seven of your cycle. And as I like, oh my God, I've just got flowers. It's a beautiful reminder, but it doesn't need to be flowers. You could also buy yourself something else. It could be some delicious food or a really beautiful slice of cake or your favorite chocolate, but buying something to honor yourself at pinnacle points of your cycle that makes you feel fully supported is my third ritual. Now, my fourth ritual is actually an Ayurvedic favorite of mine. I love doing this every menstrual bleed or not bleed, but every 
menstrual cycle before I bleed. And that's a castor oil pack. Now, I teach how to do a castor oil pack over inside the Well Women Academy. It's very, very easy to do. You need castor oil, you need a hot water bottle and some cloth and you can give yourself a castor oil pack. Now, it's really important to not do this while you're bleeding. It can sometimes promote more bleeding than necessary. So you want to do this as a preparation in your inner autumn. So this is an inner autumn ritual to try a castor oil pack pack. Now, another great inner autumn ritual to try is a yoni steam. Yoni steaming is fantastic for your post-menstruation or your pre-menstruation. There's lots of beautiful herbs that you can get to, to explore your own yoni steam. But ultimately, what you're doing is you're kind of steaming your yoni the way that you would steam your face. So think about at home, if you were to do a face steam, you'd boil some water on a stove, you'd place your face over it with a towel, perhaps, and really allow the steam to just nurture and nourish the skin on your face. Now, you can do the same thing for your yoni. Really important, don't do this whilst you're menstruating. I'm not an expert in yoni steaming. I'm just an advocate for yoni steaming. So I strongly suggest not doing it whilst you're menstruating unless you've been giving guidance from a yoni steam educator around how to do that. Now, in the link to this show notes, you'll also find a link to find out what herbs you can use in your yoni steam. So yoni steaming is a great thing and I strongly recommend you give it a go. Now, number six is another thing I love in my inner autumn and this is using my red carnelian yoni egg. Now, this is a crystal yoni egg and I really find that this helps me draw my energy down downwards into my womb bowl, my womb space, preparing for menstruation. So I'm encouraging you to give it a go. Use a red carnelian. Now there's lots of different yoni egg crystals out there, but red carnelian specifically is a fantastic egg because of the properties of the red carnelian. Now this is all about women's health. It's about drawing your energy down. And if you want to learn more about crystals and their purposes for the menstrual cycle, we have a whole episode on this on the Well Women podcast. Head to my website at wellsome.com and search crystal stones and it will come up for you. Now, number seven is something that is really related to your chakras, but also to your alignment in your cycle. And that's wear something yellow during your inner summer. Regardless of whether you're on a moon cycle um, cycle or you're on a menstrual cycle tracker, use or wear something yellow. So for me, I love wearing like yellow dresses um, or I like wearing yellow t-shirts or yellow underwear. I've got a few little pieces so that my wardrobe has a color for every every single chakra, really. When I studied the chakras back in 2015, I just brought a whole range of colored clothes. So I had a, a color to represent every stage of my menstrual cycle and chakras. So wear yellow whilst you're ovulating or you're in that in a summertime, it helps with a luminosity and just notice what energy you have when you wear the color yellow. Ritual number eight is to dance. Now, this is one of my absolutely favorite things to do all the time, but my dance changes depending on what phase of my menstrual cycle I'm in. So I'm encouraging you to dance. Now, if you are a little unsure, like what am I going to dance to? If you head to the show notes for this particular episode at wellsome.com forward slash podcast, I have, and just search for the episode number 178, I have playlists on Spotify dedicated to each phase of your cycle and I will pop them in the show notes so you can go and listen to them. They are so fun. I listen to them every phase of my cycle. I love changing up the playlist. I love adding new songs to the playlist for you. And it definitely gets me moving. And I'm like, this is exactly how I feel in my inner autumn. And I move, move my body with my wild woman energy. So dance is ritual number eight. Now ritual number nine. Now this was one of the hardest, most challenging things for me to do when I was learning to live cyclically. And that's rest. Rest is a ritual. And I'm encouraging you as a as a resting ritual to try because when we rest, we often don't know how to do that with movement. So what I love to do when I'm resting is apply cyclical yoga. Now, if you've never heard of cyclical yoga before, I teach yoga classes over inside the Well Women Academy. We have a library of yoga classes specific to your yoga um, method and also each phase of your cycle. So you can head to wellsome.com forward slash academy to learn more about the Well Women Academy. But here, what I'm encouraging you do is to stop going to the gym and doing the high intensity workouts. Stop getting super hot and sweaty and using your abdominal muscle, muscles. 
rather allow and soften down and open the body and surrender when you're menstruating. So ritual number nine is specific for your inner winter time when you're menstruating, maybe perhaps also the end of your inner autumn so that you can bring in some rest there too if you feel called to. But cyclical yoga, give it a go. I'm a teacher of cyclical yoga. I love it. The founder of the cyclical yoga method. And you can learn more about this over on my website at www.wellsome.com forward slash academy. All right. Number 10, (sighs) celebrate. I love this ritual. Have a friend, a girlfriend, a sister, a colleague, who you connect with with their menstrual cycle. So what I mean by this is wherever you are in your cycle, organize with them where they are in their cycle that they celebrate your welcoming of your next bleed. So for example, if you are bleeding right now and your bestie is after her ovulation, she's just ovulated, or maybe she's on day 10 of her cycle, what if she could shower you with that extra energy she has during her inner spring or inner summer with a little bit of a celebratory meal or a date or a phone call or a gift or a little massage whilst you begin bleeding? And then when she, your bestie, is in her menstrual cave and she's begun menstruating in her own little red tent, you can return the favor. And celebrating your menstrual cycle and having a cycle ritual with your best friends is one of the best ways we can support women living and connecting cyclically. Traditionally and ancestrally, all women used to live in cyclical natures together, maybe not aligned at the same day exactly every single month, But what that meant is that they had a great supportive network and supportive circle. So regardless of whether you live in person close by to your bestie or you live a far distance away, you can still connect. You can do little things like dropping things in the mailbox. You can surprise them with a gift, with a phone call, a FaceTime, a Zoom call. Or maybe you do have the opportunity to drive over to the house and give them a little 10 minute facial or a five minute foot rub. So connect with your bestie as a ritual number 10 and celebrate your menstrual cycles with other menstrual vulva owners. So that's a wrap. 10 menstrual cycle rituals that you need to give a go. What ritual are you going to try first out of the 10? There is a lot to go through, but just pick one that you're going to apply to your next cycle and then add that in. Then your following cycle, pick one more and add that in. And then the following cycle after that, pick one more and add that in too. I'd love to hear what rituals you're applying to your menstrual cycle. Come over and share them with me on Instagram at wellsome underscore Gemma Lee. It's where I hang out the most and I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of our Reclaiming Your Cycle mini series. I can't wait to share with you what's coming next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to every episode of the Well Woman Podcast. For everything we mentioned in today's episode, you can find this in the show notes over at wellsome.com forward slash podcast. If this episode excited you, please hit follow on Spotify, which means all of my episodes will pop up in your feed weekly so you never miss a weekly drop. I'd love you to leave a review on Apple Podcasts too. Love this episode? Come and follow me over on Instagram at wellsome underscore Gemily. Say hi and share what you've taken away from this episode with me. Now, is there a bestie, sister, or a friend who you know who might be fed up, frustrated, and confused with their cycles? Are they ready to join you in awakening their cyclical essence too? Well, take a screenshot of this podcast episode, share it on your socials, email it, text it, or any way you need to get it to them. So together, we can all live in flow, harmony, and balance with our cycles. Now, until next time, beautiful, get connected, listen to your body, and remember, body confidence all begins with living in tune with your menstrual cycle.